15 inches long. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was seriously huge. Like it was, it wasn't like unbelievably large. Like, you know, it wasn't like a capybara sized thing, but it was like very big for like a couple of guinea pigs, you know. Times were tough. So I sold my soul. Hey, Internet! Highway 47 here with you old school. It is Star Trek The Next Generation with your favorite crew. At least a couple of us, because we're the only ones that showed up. I'm Shaggy B. With me is Draco Funk. How's it going, Draco Funk? Hey, you know. Yeah, you sound as enthusiastic as I actually am. This excited voice, it's all an act. I feel like shit. I'm pretty good. Okay. I I mean, I, I just ate too much. I'm good. I really want to eat more <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I i have this superpower where i i can influence people with peer pressure but only when i don't really try to <laughs> it's like yeah i'm the cool guy who ate like three people's worth of pizza and then everybody's like i want to eat too much pizza <laughs> yeah don't yeah like, I'm only cool. Ooh. No, what? <laughs> I just unmuted my. <laughs> like, I'm going to call, so I'm going to mute it. And then. <laughs> Man, I just did it all wrong. <laughs> well, the best part. Was... <laughs> I mean, I've never heard you vomit, but. <laughs> <laughs> like we were just about we were just talking about overeating and they're like yeah me too and then <laughs> oh god Star Trek the next generation is what we're watching tonight um, it has been a long time since we've continued in our chronological sequence of next gen episodes uh, this is season two, episode twelve, of the Royale, and as we have discussed many times, and probably the reason we haven't really recorded more of these is that they're just now getting good. Yeah. And uh, Draco Funk, I know this happens to be a, a favorite of yours, so why don't you tell the people all about it? Hey, this episode, the Royale, with um, cheese. The, the... <sighs> it's been said. We don't have to say it anymore. Originally aired March 25th, 1989, has an IMDb rating of 6.7. I know some people are like, why are you using the IMDb ratings? Because it's just something that everything we're watching, I can have an, we can have an IMDb rating. And F Feel free to rate the episodes yourself and post your rating in the comments. We will, at the end of the season, do our top 10 list, and, or top 5, I think it was top 5. Uh, yeah, it was top five. We'll each do our top five list and compare notes at the end of it. We will probably do that while we're watching um, Shades of Grey. Shades of Grey, because yeah, I mean, it's basically a best of episode. <sighs> it's you so know, nice during a best of episode. <laughs> it's the kind of best of episode where nobody actually decided on anything good. It was just like, here are things. This is a list of things. See that, you know, that's a concept that nobody's doing on YouTube. Like you see like, this is my top eight or my top 10 or my top 11 or my top 16 or whatever. Nobody's doing like, here are arbitrary, here are arbitrary examples of a category that I chose. Hey, Highway 47's opening a sister channel just now. Arbitrary list. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I will start fucking making videos of this. <laughs> Opening a beer. Uh, that, that, that may happen, like, soon. Here are some birds. 
<laughs> Here's an arbitrary list of 13 birds. I'm trying to think of a number that nobody's done. Maybe 14. 47 is too many. <laughs> <laughs> Not if you say them really fast. Bird, 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 bird. <laughs> That's just pictures just flashing up on the screen. <laughs> you know, I've noticed where I live now, speaking of birds, and particularly in the last couple of weeks, there are, there's like a disproportionate number of like small songbirds that have the color red on them around here. And, and I'm not just talking about like cardinals, like there's a lot of cardinals. But there's there's other birds that are like all red, but you know not cardinals. And then there's like I saw I saw a really cool black bird with like with like sort of red things on its shoulders, kind of look like epaulets, like a military uniform. Oh yeah, we get all those all the time. Those are um, something I can't remember. I'm really bad with it. And then like the website I used, like they're down for maintenance. Oh, figures. So, like, the list that, like, it had this great list of Ohio birds. And yeah. they just, like, took it down. It's Figures. Just gone. Figures. Was it hosted by the state? Because the state yes. likes to take, you know, the state likes to take down their useful websites there. God damn it. I am really happy that I saved the entire collection of historical road sign photos that the Ohio Department of Transportation used to host. Um, it's, like... I mean, as you may guess by like the theme of our channel, I'm I'm kind of a road geek, and uh, that that makes me really happy to have that. Man, I'm just like, and it, it was a um, I probably have it somewhere. I got to just search for it, but it, it had a great PDF that just had all the birds for Ohio and pictures. Hmm. Well, if you figure out that bird. If if you know what like a, a little like you know robin sized bird that's like jet black but with like red epaulets on its shoulders, um, post in the comments what it is. Give me give me a second. Like I know what it is. Um, man, I can't. I like suddenly can't remember the name of it. You're, you're gonna spend ten minutes looking. I'm gonna bleep it out so that they have to post it in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> Draco Funky, I mean you. Yeah, but we have a whole bunch of them, and they'll yell at me if the bird feeder is like empty. Well, this was just on a bike trail, so you know, I just I just saw it, and then it flew away because I was charging at it on a bicycle. So, well, we um we've been feeding the birds. Like we have two suet feeders, mm -hmm. um, three hummingbird feeders in the back, one in the front, um, a seed feeder, and we, we were feeding Orioles, but I think most of the Orioles have moved on. Right. So, yeah, every morning we go out and sit and have coffee and watch the birds. Yeah. Well, it's, it's just, in, I just found it interesting. There are so many red birds around here. But red birds have nothing to do with this episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. No, they don't. And, um, and I, I don't believe that I was watching birds on May the 25th of 1989 either. I probably wasn't. I, uh, really even watching Star Trek at this time. I saw this episode in reruns. It was, I think it, it was one of the last ones that I saw. Like, it was one of the ones that I specifically, like, had to hunt down <laughs> to, like, actually see. Like, I'm not sure they ever really ran it in, in, a, in, in rerun syndication on, like, the network TV when I was growing up. Like, I, I may not have seen this one. Until, like, I was in my 20s. There were two episodes I didn't see um, for well, Shade, a long time. Shades of Grey I didn't see until uh, um, until I had Netflix. <laughs> but that doesn't matter, you know. Yeah. So what was the other one? My two that I, that I didn't see were dr The Drumhead, because I just seemed to always miss it, and mm -hmm. The Pursuit. That doesn't ring a bell. Ah, oh, crap! I can't remember the name. It's the one where they fought, where that guy gives Picard the the statues that he just like tosses away. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's like late in the series, like six or seven season, right? Yeah, what's it called? 
Uh, the chase? Maybe. Yes, the chase. See, yeah. I was close. I said the pursuit. <laughs> it's the chase. <laughs> the pursuit. The, uh... <laughs> <laughs> close enough, as far as I'm concerned. <sighs> well, um... Yeah, but no, I I remember like knowing of this episode and like being curious about it for a long time and not catching it until I had to go find it. I saw this at a young young age and um I did not realize how I don't know exactly what the right word is. We'll talk about it when we get in there. When Excellent we get the episode. Sorry, right. Roger's not here. We're watching this. What what are we watching this on? I'm watching it on Hulu. What are you watching it on? I'll watch it on Hulu as well. All right. Um, so I have my episode up, and I started it, and then I hit the 10-second rewind button. If you're watching this on Netflix, do not skip the intro. Or if you're watching it on D- DVD or, you know, Betamax. These didn't come out on Betamax, did they? Well, you know, maybe somebody bootlegged it on Betamax. Would be a better copy than the VHS bootlegs that I watched most of this on. <laughs> it came you out like a... Go ahead. It came out like eleven o'clock at night. I had school, you know. Oh, see, my my TV station. It came on at seven o'clock every day. I'd be out riding my bike, and I'm like, "Crap! It's like six fifty. I have to ride home really fast." Hmm. My friends th- probably thought I was crazy. By the time I got into it. During the summer, I could watch one episode at 10 o'clock and another episode immediately after at 11, 11 o'clock on another station. But during the, most of the school year, they ran at the same time at 10 o'clock on both stations, but they were usually different episodes. But during school, I couldn't stay up because, yeah. you know, I, I had school. So I think we actually had two VCRs set up to tape them. <laughs> to tape them both on different channels for a while to complete the collection, but yeah. At any rate, we are now 45 minutes into this recording session, so we'll have fun (laughs) editing this. (laughs) And I think we're ready to start. You know what to do to watch it. We've got our fingulatrons on our buttonulators, and let's do it. You ready? Yeah, give us a countdown. All right. Let me pull my thing up. This is Star Trek The Next Generation Season 2, Episode 12, The Royale, starting in... Five, four, three, two, one. Bing, bada boom, bada bing. Bang, boom. I like the tense music as it comes up. Yeah. Eighth planet. Yes, the pieces we put there when we blew it to shreds. Ha ha ha. Uh. <laughs> Hang on. Minus. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> Minus 291C. To Kelvin. Yeah, that's below absolute zero. (laughs) That's minus 17 Kelvin. You can't. The the premise of this episode is so, so wrong to begin with. Okay, firm as last theorem, but below absolute zero. (laughs) And somebody saw that recently. I have to Google this too. I'll just like trying to be scientific in the second season. First proof in 
Keep staring at this computer that's not covered in pornography and pretended science. It was actually solved in 1993. There you go. Good enough for me. Bring it up. <laughs> Oh, look, O'Brien gets to work today. Yay. Don't grab it so fast. It's covered in liquid neon. That's 17 degrees below absolute zero. You'll freeze burn your fingers. NASA stopped using that logo. And although they did put it recently, put it on the new SpaceX ship for nostalgia reasons. Well, you know, nostalgia is a good enough reason for a lot of things. When, when, like the current day reality is so abhorrent and terrifying and unfamiliar that you can't make sense of your day to day life, nostalgia is an okay indulgement. Did you notice there were fifty two stars on that flag? I did, in fact. So, what I never understood and confused me from this episode. Wrong note, by the way. But anyway. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a NASA spacecraft. Alleg allegedly, it was launched around 2037. Uh-huh. Like, I don't remember if they... Maybe they explained it in the episode, and we'll have to see. How did it get out here? Like, this is pre-warp. That's a good point. And this will bug me because, like, I remember watching this episode and it made sense. Oh, yeah, space shuttle just flew out to this planet. <laughs> and then, like, years later, I'm like, wait a minute. I can just imagine J.J. Abrams pointing to this episode and be like, see, 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 you don't always have to have the distances right. See? Well, okay, there, they just said it. I don't know, liquid neon below absolute zero might do it. Yeah, why don't you go? Yeah. Gents. They get green they lights? <laughs> how, how would they know what a green light is? <laughs> to hell. That's a big storm that covers an ocean and... Oh. <laughs> oh. I do like the premise of this episode. It's, yeah. This this is like a total original series premise. I was just thinking, like, this always makes me think about how um, this would have been, this would have fit right in with a, 
with an original series plot. They can knock you over. Pinch your fingers in it. Why did they splice in that shot of Picard looking concerned and folding his arms right there? It needed to be a few seconds longer. So this... Atrium here reminds me of um, a Mexican restaurant that used to be um, okay in Beaver Creek. <laughs> Abuelos, remember that place? Yeah. Yeah, it looks like that. <laughs> I don't think they ever... That place um, got hit hard by the tornado. Yeah. I don't think they... Well, they closed a bunch of times, and <clears throat> like they had trouble for a while. Uh oh! You should go back out. Why would Wesley have to be the one to tell them that? Well, Wharf is not a station. How do you? <laughs> Finger on the trigger. <laughs> Can I kill him, boss? Oh, wait. <laughs> what with the arches and the french fries and the only four different shapes of chicken nuggets terrifying and you call it a milkshake my god <laughs> Data hide your smile. I swear that guy looked a lot like Billy D. Williams. He really did, yeah.
They're soulless husks of humans, addicted to gambling. Nothing left to live for except the thrill of the win. What kind of technology could create like a room like this? Commercial break. <laughs> You angels. You know, he's kind of right. Data doesn't have DNA structure either. That, that is true. I love how space roller is in the next generation for some reason. Mm -hmm. Hundreds? So you have a three bit code. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty six possible combinations, huh? Please don't ask me to choose two words. <sighs> there are apparently a lot of errors with how this game is played. I say they dealt the cards. Butter my asshole and call me a biscuit. With gravy. T take take your chips, Data. Uh, I I really really want Worf to wear the hat. Right, me too. It would never <laughs> fit him. <laughs> I don't I don't care. He needs at least like a seventeen gallon hat. <laughs> Oh, 
You don't need to tell me, Jordy. Just do it. What I'm saying. Maybe don't. Maybe don't shoot the oxygen bubble. <laughs> Keeping at least one of them alive. Like data can only give CPR for so long, you know. It's too bad they don't beam down with like a um, backpack full of, you know, like survival equipment. Yeah. <laughs> Air tanks, you know. They could put like liquid oxygen bladders like in their pants or something. Mm -hmm. Except the more I think about that, the more of a bad idea it seems like. Like the liquid oxygen is like 50 degrees below absolute zero, you know? <sighs> My grandma used to do that. Oh, yeah. Wharf smash. Wharf shove. Headbutt. Okay. Stronger. <laughs> Stupid Fisher Price phaser. Stay closer, Riker. Yeah. Set my chest hair on fire. Riker would probably like that. I don't think his daddy issues are that strong. <laughs> <laughs> Commercial break. <laughs> Wee. Her back. Ooh. Uh-oh. Can't you, like, talk to him? No. No, I mean, Troy, she was able to talk to him in the first episode. Yeah, but that was the pilot. She hasn't worn her hair like that since. It's blocking the waves. She's going to be a Wendy's girl after tonight. I just, I can only imagine like <laughs> Ronald McDonald holding Wendy hostage, you know? <laughs> like the Hamburglar showing him how to tie her to a chair, you know? <laughs> yeah, the Burger King comes in with a sword to free her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the Tender Chris Bacon Cheddar Ranch song plays in the background during the battle scene. Wimma Bill. And then Big Boy, Fish's Big Boy comes in and like, mows everybody down with a machine gun. Yes.
No. They had some sort of recording and transmission device that they could use to send like pictures. If only they had like a recorder. They or record, like, you know, like, like a 20th, 21st century cell phone. Like three recorders. Termolifts. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that guy's still alive. I love how, like, Worf, in, like, every episode where there's a door, he has no idea how to open the door. <laughs> <laughs> that is, like... That's, like, 1975, like, coastal South Carolina kind of vibe. Worf opened the door. <laughs> oh, he knows how to use this door. Reading intensifies. Worst ways to go. Yeah. So we've got 13 years until we add Puerto Rico and D.C. to the States. Why D.C.? Why, why, why shouldn't D.C. be a state? I'm not saying it shouldn't. I'm just saying, what, why, what about Guam? or? Well, D.C. has a higher population than a few states. Yeah. Um, without voting representation in Congress. I mean, I see a lot of DC license plates around where I live, and like, have you seen a DC license plate? No. There's a slogan on it. Hmm. What it is? No. Taxation no. without representation. <laughs> uh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> dollar store. Nefarious Lothario.
<laughs> I've read a few books like that. I've read several Star Trek books like that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder Thank you, William Shatner. Um what aliens Probably the That's same break. We. It's the aliens who uh, made that, like, who made Mobster Chicago their entire culture. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's a colony of those people. Oh yeah, Doctor Pulaski's. Oh yeah. Meanwhile, Thomas Riker is still on his planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Painting murals of Deanna and his own feces on a wall. <laughs> Ugh, Miss Girlfriend. How the hell does he know how to use a phone? Uh, yeah, can you come in and remove the dead body? No. That's good. I want to imagine, like, they keep call this guy every day. <laughs> Any room service? Yeah, can you bring me another burger? Like endless supplies of pizza. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, that got me into some trouble tonight. And an acre of fried chicken. Yes. <laughs> Eight tacos before dinner. <laughs> Hotel. 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 That is not a real book. Not yet. <laughs> no, it won't. You know, you could give Deanna her... Nah, make her stand to read over your... <laughs> hey, laptops are in short supply. I only have two at my house right now that work. I've only got one. Well, one more of them probably works, but the screen's broken. Yeah, my wife, actually, hers kind of works, but it's just old. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> I have a ninety one caddy. Does it have eighty one does it have eighty thousand miles on it? No. Baby's like, that's okay. Yeah. Huh. 
I got 91 caddy out front. You want to ride in the back? At 13? What? She always gets a 10. I mean, statistically. Like, I would have hit on a 13. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. Where's Billy D. William? <laughs> The ambient music. Sell them, give them apple pies instead of food on time. <laughs> yeah. I really feel like this should be the music for Riker when he walks in the room. Particularly whenever he like climbs over the back of a chair to sit on it. Mm-hmm. Love that shirt. It was so 80s. Yeah, to do it in the parking lot. Stuff. See. Yeah. How did he die without bleeding? You said you were going to do this outside. Baggy suit pants. Learn how to put on a jacket, dude. <laughs> we should dress like that and go places. We'd be arrested. <laughs> 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 like, seriously. Like, somebody would, like, call the police. It's not bad for a hotel. Yeah. Maybe there's like some reverse inflation. Well, this isn't set in the time of Captain Ritchie. This is set in the time of the novel. Right. Commercial break. Hey. I really wish like Riker would get a little trombone and like play some jazz in the corner. <laughs> Did anybody remove that dead body, by the way? 
I mean, he didn't bleed. She, she is the most unlucky woman. <laughs> I got a 91 Cadillac with it. Yeah. <laughs> That's right, math man. Ferment's last theorem, anybody? Like, I don't understand these random dice. Because <laughs> it's America and healthcare is expensive, is the joke. <laughs> you know, the cha ching arm thing really dates stuff these days, you know? Yeah. It was like a seven year thing, like. Like eighty eight to ninety like eighty nine to ninety six ish and then like never again. Yeah. <laughs> and that's about when somebody trips and falls into him as he's throwing it. <laughs> Mixing metaphors in Texas. You know, this is craps. So, did Data like roll, fix the dice for every roll? <laughs> Apparently. It's a 91. I mean, you know, not that cool. Uh, 
Is that like With what Freeman? money? What? Does that guy look like Morgan Freeman? I didn't see him. Oh. Oh, that guy. guy. Yeah, yeah kind of. He's glanced at the camera. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> what if this doesn't work? <laughs> Seriously, what if that hadn't worked? Yeah, really. The whole oxygen also, collapses and they die. Also, who moved the body? <laughs> <laughs> well, they can beam them out. They can beam the body out. I have a question. Uh huh. So, can people just now go to the Hotel Royale to visit it, you know, like for vacation? I mean, Data owns it. Yeah. So, this. Technically, Picard own it now. I don't know. It was the Packwoods. Hmm. Yeah, that right. For like five years. Four years from this. Four years. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, 27 years ago from the time of us watching this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there are people with more advanced college degrees than either one of us have that were born after Fermat's last theorem, theorem was solved. Uh... <laughs> uh, I'm sad now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was going over a list of um, like the the assistant manager. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just like this big TV actor been on um, Uncle Buck. <laughs> like, every TV show, he did, like, an appearance in Melrose Place and The Heat of the Night. The Adventures of Briscoe County Jr. Dan MacGyver? Uh, I, haven't got, I haven't seen that. He was on, he was in the movie Forrest Gump as the principal. Oh, nice. Oh, God, he was the principal. <laughs> It's been so long since I've seen Forrest Gump, I don't remember the principal. Oh, God. How bad do you want him to get into school? Oh. Right. Now do you remember? Yeah. He was on the Jeff Foxworthy show, Rugrats, The X-Files, huh. Ally McBeal. Oh, now we're in the 2000s. <laughs> the West Wing. Yeah, it's just a big CSI Miami. Wow. It's kind of interesting, like, 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 we're sort of at a point in, in time where, like, we're, we're a generation removed from, like, we're just now a generation removed from the people that were in shows made around, the, around that, around, like, 1990, you know? Oh, he was Bernard in Unlost. But 10 years ago, we weren't in that place yeah. in time like you know like it, it was still perfectly reasonable for 2010 to encounter you know somebody who was who was in in something in 1990 but i would argue that tv changed a lot more from you know from from say 95 to 2005 than it did from 2005 to 2015 mm -hmm. that's kind of yeah. weird to think about He's a Magnum PI. Oh, cool. Blue Thunder. <laughs> WKRP in Cincinnati. Jonathan Frakes was on WKRP, wasn't he? I believe so. Like he played bat like he played villains before he got this role. I can see that. Yeah. He's kind of made himself known as a director. Hmm. Uh, frankly, I think he's better at directing than acting. <laughs> I, I will agree with that. I mean, you know, the character of Riker works, but you know. Yeah. I I still you know what, I enjoy this episode even though it doesn't quite make sense and Yeah. Well I think I think this, this episode kind of 
it, it sets a bar for how to do campy Star Trek well. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's it's very it, it yeah it's it's ridiculous, but it's it's executed well enough and without you know you know there, it's not it doesn't go for like cheap laughs it doesn't go for for crude humor it you know it it, it does the campiness but it does it it, it does it respectably. Mm-hmm. And and I think that's kind of that's that's a tough balance to strike, and I, I, and I, it seems like it's tougher now than it was. You know, you you can't you can't make something campy now without completely ruining it with fart jokes or swearing. Yeah, nobody wants like campy cheesy stuff. Well, it's not that we don't want campy cheesy stuff; it's that we don't also want. A porno film. We don't want the two, both of them at the same time. You know, we don't want. Yeah, yeah. you know, there, there was, there, there was nothing. There was nothing like they didn't try to make this sexy. They didn't try to make it, you know, tense and dark. They, they just, you know, it was just kind of a fun little thing. And 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 it was, and, and what things did kind of stick out as as being, you know incongruous with, with Star Trek, which mostly to me is the way data is played. Um, I think they, I think uh, it's just too much to me, you know, data doing all the fun little motions and smiling and having fun gambling and all that. Yeah. How dare he have fun? Well, because he's an Android who doesn't feel emotions, but (laughs) you know, and, and like, I don't know, like, like it, 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 it needed a little bit more. It needed one line that said, Hey data, play the part. You know, if they had had Riker turn to him and said, Data, play the part. That would have been it. That would have worked. 100% solved, you know? I agree with you. But, but it's, not, it's not glaring enough of a problem to me to, to like bring this whole episode down. It's just kind of like, oh yeah, this is the one where Data does that silly thing, but it's a really good episode. You know, I can, I can say it that way. I don't think it deserves the 6.7 rating. I think you know, and honestly, I think if, if there would have been that one line, if the camera would have, you know, if, if we would have had a three second exchange of, you know, them walking and, you know, Riker stops and then, you know, Data's walking and Riker goes, and Data, and Data turns, sir, and then camera cut to Riker and he says, play the part. And then Data says, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And then they cut to him doing all the crazy shit, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, that, I completely agree with you. Would have been 7.5. That would have I, saved. I don't know about seven point five. I say this is a good. This is a solid seven. Yeah, it, it would have been. Let's nah, split the difference. Seven point two. It yeah, it, it's better than the child. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's as good as where silence has least though, and that's a seven point one. I'm also okay, although so... I think si- where silence has least should have been a little bit higher too. I think so. Okay, so let me ask you this. Should there have been a memorial scene for Colonel Ritchie? Because, I, feel like, be- I feel like that would have been a very Star Trek thing to do. It would have been a very Star Trek thing to do, and it would have been a very post-9-11 thing to do. Know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that, that I, I found myself like surprised at the end of this, because it's, it's been a little, it's been a year or two, well, probably about four years since I watched this. Um, I, I was surprised that we didn't get, you know, a send off like, oh, Colonel Ritchie was this great hero and God bless space exploration and all that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was I was surprised not to see that, but I when I thought about that for five seconds, I was like, well, no, because like the culture wasn't that yet. The culture wasn't reverence for the people who served yet at this time. And I think that's an interesting thing to think about is, is that's, that's one of the things that has shifted in our culture. And, um, and we may find shifting again, like as we speak uh, here in the, the middle of June of 2020 um, with all the upheaval going on. Yeah. I By the way, staying safe out there. Absolutely. And, and if you're not staying safe, we hope you make a difference. Yeah. If you have not gone and watched our uh, three-part um, deep dive and commentary on um, Deep Space Nine, Past Tense, Parts 1 and 2, the episode with the Bell Riots, please go check that out. 
Um, we want to do some more Black Lives Matter sort of tribute-ish videos with some more deep dives, um, kind of dig into some 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 stories that are out there that that you know maybe we can amplify a little bit. Um, that's that's a word that I've been seeing popped up as as something that can do a lot of good you know these days with everything going on. Is if you if you if you can't go out and, and get yourself tear gassed or or if you can't you know necessarily throw a lot of money at the cause or or, or whatever you can you can amplify a voice and uh, we're in a position to do that a little bit so uh, we hope to do a few more of those and we hope you'll join us for those and for more Star Trek: The Next Generation uh, four drink minimum Godzilla movies with vomit both literally and the man um, coming out every now and then. All sorts of stuff going on. Yeah. Um, Highway 47 um, supports Black Lives Matter. We certainly do. Um, I'm, can I, I can say that I, I really hope we make a good change. I hope our future goes where it needs to go. And that we can you know, realize the vision that Gene Roddenberry had. In a lot of ways, yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and there's an argument to be made that some of what Gene Roddenberry wanted for the future, believed would be in the future, was unrealistic. Um, the, 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 the answer to that, to me, is that things are only unrealistic until you've seen them happen. Um, smartphones were unrealistic, and now we have them. You know, the internet was unrealistic, and now we have it. A TV that didn't weigh 40 pounds and wasn't two feet thick was unrealistic. You know, when's the last time you saw a CRT anywhere? So be careful when you, when you, when you throw out ideas. Be careful when you, when you see calls for progress and your instinct is to say that's impossible. Be careful with that. There we are. Yep. yep. I'm looking at um, the next episode of the next year. You just cut out one of my favorite. <laughs> just beat me right in. Okay, the next episode of the next generation is Times Squared, and it's one of my favorite episodes. Times Squared is a fantastic. It's a, mm. it is it is a very Star Trek episode, and. It's a top ten next gen episode for me. It really is. I I, w I would agree with that completely. So uh, I hope to have the whole crew. Uh, I hope to get Scrodrick around for that one. Um, you know the original crew. Well, you know. Yeah. If you want to hear vomit, come watch Godzilla. I don't know, but, <laughs> but yeah, we we hope to have Scrodrick along with that one. Uh, it deserves the three of us. So uh, we'll have that coming your way as soon as we can get it your way. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.